Avengers Age of Ultron. I saw this at the premiere. This was so awesome. I mean, I was so excited for this movie. Um, just wait until you see how excited I will be for Star Wars 7. The Ant-Man is technically the final chapter of Phase 2, but I consider this to be the final chapter in my mind, so I will always refer to this as the final chapter. Yeah. Uh... See, as for the plot, you know, Ultron, James Spader, is created by Stark and Banner as, you know, kind of a peacekeeping thing to keep a shield around the world to just, you know, to stop any alien invasion from ever happening ever again. And, you know, so that goes, that goes completely wrong. Uh, so, you know, Ultron actually enlists the helps of the Maximoffs, uh, aka Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch, to help him. And, I mean, they're not bad characters, it's just they're a bit rushed, you know, I mean, just throwing them in there all of a sudden. Kind of like Hawkeye in the original Avengers, he just felt rushed. You have no idea how hard it is to talk about this movie without spoilers, or maybe you do. But, you know, it's just, it's so, man, I keep changing the camera angle. It's just so difficult to talk about this movie without spoiling anything, so sorry, that's about all I can give you for the plot. So as for the characters, you know, Captain America, he's still a good character, you know, he's, he's probably the protagonist of the movie. I mean, you know, Robert Downey Jr. gets first billing, but you look at it, Captain America really is the protagonist of this movie and the first Avenger movie. Uh, you, you also get to see how he has conflict, conflicting views with Stark, which will lead to Civil War. Uh, you know, Iron Man, I... I ne I, Iron Man never grew on me, guys. I mean, if I ever, I will go back and review the original three Iron Man movies and the Avengers. And Iron Man, he just never freaking grew on me. I'm like, I don't know. I just don't like him. I, I like Robert Downey Jr., though. And, you know, it's good because we see how he's willing to take more risks, how much of a risk taker he is, and how, uh, how much more reserved the, all the other Avengers are. And there's, uh, Mark Ruffalo as Bruce Banner slash the Hulk. You know, we get to see how even all they've been through, you see is still scared of the Hulk. I mean, you know, he knows once he turns into Hulk, if he gets mad enough, he can have no control over what the Hulk does. So, yeah, and like I said before, he has no chemistry with Scarlett Johansson. I mean, they're both good actors, and I don't have anything against either of them. They just, they're not a good couple. So Thor, you know, Thor isn't as important in this movie. He's there, and he does a few key things, but he's just not, you know, there. Uh, you know, he is a good hero. Chris Hemsworth is really good. Uh, and I really don't have that much to say about him, which can't be good, because that means that I have no complaints. Uh, then there's Black Widow, or Natasha Romanoff, played by Scarlett Johansson. Uh, once again, uh, we got to see some backstory of her, which is good. Uh... Because uh, we don't get to, see, we never got to see any of that before, uh, and also you know I like how she kind of is just drawn to the Hulk, even though that's just kind of nah. Then there's Hawkeye played by Jeremy Renner. He finally got some development and he finally got a key role in the movie. I thought that he was gonna die, like I said in my trailer review, just because he's not important and Joss Whedon never really kills off characters that are super super important. Um, but, you know, I like how in this movie he finally was important. He's a key part of the story, especially during one part, or a few parts, uh, yeah. And I like his subplot with Linda Cardellini, which I'm not going to say into the spoiler section. Then there's Quicksilver, played by Aaron Taylor Johnson. Uh, you know, he's a good character. He's just kind of bland as far as his personality goes. We do get to see his relationship with his sister, the how close of a bond they have. I, I mean, I see it, but I don't feel it, which, I don't know. But then there's Scarlet Witch, played by Elizabeth Olsen. Um, once again, she's in it more than Quicksilver. She's more developed. I do like her powers. I like the scene where she, uh, she goes up behind Hawkeye and thinks, oh, Hawkeye's gonna be hypnotized again. And he's just like, nope. Uh, that was really funny. Um. Uh, yeah, and I like the speech Hawkeye gets her at the end, too, where they're sitting there in the abandoned church, and he's like, okay, I'm not going to do it into the spoiler section. Um, then there's War Machine, played by Don Cheeto. He is a, a key part of this movie, also. I uh, I like to see him as part of the team, which is good, because I think War Patriot or War Machine, whatever you want to call him, he should be part of the team, part of the Avengers, and the ending of this movie hints that he will be. Um... Then there's the Vision, played by Paul Bettany. I can't say too much about him, because the fact that he's an important character is already a huge spoiler. Um, he's, a, he's a great... Uh, he's a good character. You know, he didn't feel as rushed as Scarlet the Witch and Quicksilver did, but and he's a vital part of the story. Then there's Ultron, played by James Spader. He is a great villain. One of the greatest 
uh, I think he is the best villain in Phase 2. Uh, his voice got a little bit high sometimes. You know, you see, all we got from the trailer was James Spader's deep voice. I got no strings. That was a terrible interpretation. <laughs> And I, I, mean, I didn't really like the humor, though, how cocky he was, just because that's not in my mind when I picture Ultron. I mean, not to say that he had a bunch of bad lines or anything. He was funny. It's just that's not, I don't know, I just didn't like it because that's not what I think when I picture Ultron. I thought Loki was a cocky villain. He was not. And then there's Nick Fury, who, but played by Samuel L. Jackson, who only got a really small part, to be honest. You know, I, we, we see how changed he was by the events that took place in Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Um... And, you know, Samuel L. Jackson does do a lot as the good guy who only shows up when he uh, needs to give advice. Who just randomly shows up when he needs to give advice. Because I think that's really going to be what Nick Fury is from now on. Which, uh, I skip quick click right here to skip the spoilers. I liked it when Hawkeye uh, shocked Scarlet Witch. You know, she's coming up behind him because he's going to hypnotize him. Everyone's thinking, oh my gosh, is he going to get hypnotized again and become bad again? And he's just like, nope. He's like, just electric. He's just like, I already had that happen once. Not happening again. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Like, we got to see the foreshadowing for Thor Ragnarok, Captain America Civil War, and Infinity War. When Scarlet Witch goes and just kind of hypnotizes all of them, or I guess it's not hypnotism, but whatever, we get to see all of their, you know, what they fear a lot. Um, I, I don't think that they should have killed Quicksilver. I mean, I'm like, that's like if they killed off Hawkeye in the first Avengers movie. The first movie where he actually has a sl an even a remotely important part, he gets off, and I'm like, eh... I don't know, whatever. I still think they should have killed off either War Machine or Hulk. You want that speech? Go see my trailer review for this movie. Um, also, I mean, I could see the Ultron being the thing that drives Iron Man to be to fight Captain America. And I think he's like, oh my gosh, you know, I just I created this thing that almost wiped out the entire world, and I mean, I could just see that being the thing that makes him be like. Uh, no, superheroes should register, we should have a lot more, we should basically be what Obama would be like if superheroes were real. Basically, the government controls everything. Um, I mean, I like the scene where Scarlet Witch kills Ultron in revenge. You know, she's, you know, she's like, whoa, you killed my brother. And then she's just like, do you know what it's like to die? And then she just uses her powers to just rip out his heart, or his mechanical heart, and she's like, you do now. And that was and that was cool, but that wasn't his real death. That was just one of the drones. And he had our if he knows how to die from because of that, then he's known what it's like to die hundreds of times for when they've killed all of his drones. Um His real death was good though. The trailer for this movie was actually really misleading. You know, it showed Captain America's shield just broken in half, and that actually wasn't in the movie, that was in Iron Man's vision about what would happen in the future. Um I like how Hawkeye was developed also, you know, he's not just, uh, you know, some assassin, super secret agent, you know, he's a father, he is a husband, he has a family, which is cool because he's married to Lindsay from Freaks and Geeks. I also like the speech that he gives Scarlet Witch, you know, there's just so much happening, everything's being destroyed, Scarlet Witch is fighting, but then she's just like, nah, and uh, she goes into a building and like, he's there, I think, and you can tell she's just shaking, and he's like, okay, you know what? I can understand that this is happening to you. Uh, we are getting, you know, surrounded by a bunch of alien robots, and sh uh, this is, you know, it's hard to take your first real action. And uh, she's like, "What? Well, what's happening? This doesn't make sense." And she's like, "Hey, I understand. We're fighting a bunch of robots, and I'm armed with a bow and arrow. A lot of things don't make sense. And if this is too much for you, that's fine. I'll send your brother to come get you. Stay here, and yeah, that'll be good. But..." If you step out that door, you're an Avenger, and there's nothing that can change that. And I am paraphrasing a lot on that speech, but that was still, that was good. Also, this has a lot of good Whedon humor, because it's impossible to make a Joss Whedon movie that is not funny. That is not just funny in general, yeah. Um, you know, and the commentary on how humans should live, even though they cause a lot of each other's, a lot of humans' pain is caused by other humans, I mean... Yeah, well, this is just like Angel, really. So, all in all, great second movie. Not as good as the first, but it's still really good. Um, the best scene was hard to pick, but I think it is just Iron Man and Captain America talking right outside of right outside of Linda Cardellini's house. Um, you know, they're just talking to each other, and that was that was you know that was good. 
So yeah, I, I'd say this is worth seeing at the premiere. I would rate the first one that too, or I think so. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Be sure to subscribe. Bye.